Hello and welcome back to my cooking chats with you all. I'm so excited to dive into something very simple and minimal to make during the week and maybe not necessarily this like a postpartum after birth meal, but a few weeks later, it can be something very easy and simple, easy digestible for the body. Um, you can omit the cheese, but I am a big fan of balance. So as much as I love a congee and a stewed fruit more than the next person for postpartum in a bone broth, definitely a bone broth, I love a good enchilada. And I find that that balance really works for my mama clients and really just seeing where their body is every week and just honoring the fact that sometimes they want something that's not you know a rice or an oat or a stew or a bone broth so i'm really excited to share with you all my favorite enchiladas i have some beans that have already been soaked so those are ready to go some corn tortillas we have some farm fresh potatoes those are here we have some turkey um, that's from us wellness meats which i love them their farm so so much and then the raw cheddar from us wellness meats as well and a good uh, very minimal ingredient enchilada sauce. I'd love to make my own, but not in that season right now. And then some of the shredded cheese, again, that I've used from the cheddar and some sour cream. I'm gonna go grab those beans and we're gonna get going. But today I thought we could chat about uh, nesting parties because they are just so popular these days, just people chatting about them. But I'm curious, have you heard of a nesting session or a nesting party and what they're all about? So let's start cooking let's dive into it and i can't wait to chit chat so i'm just gonna cut up some of these potatoes and then get them in my iron skillet very thin so you just want to cut them very thin because we need them to cook real quick and just get them going in here and once they're good i'm going to brown the turkey and just get the turkey in this pan and it's really simple after those like necessary steps so just make sure you already have your beans cooked soaked and cooked and then if you want to do this step ahead of time, you could cook all of the meat and potatoes separately. And then the next day just assemble, but we're going to do this together. Nesting parties. Everybody these days are talking about nesting parties so much so that I now offer them um, through my website. So if you're local in San Diego, I will actually host it and teach you or show your friends how to do all the activities and really getting you nested and grounded and ready for postpartum. But um, I love nesting parties. I've always loved them. I've always done them in one way or another through prenatals, but now it's a little more festive and fun that we're doing these maternal parties for mamas. Oh yeah, I should put on my apron. Let me do that real quick. Gotta make sure that we protect our beautiful dress because you never know. And we actually do know <laughs> that I will spill I always spill something on my clothes. One way or another, I do it. I always do. Okay, got the apron on. We're good to. So nesting parties are so, so fun because it really is a shift from focusing on baby to focusing more on mama and celebrating moms in that passage, that rite of passage where you're shifting into a whole new journey. And it's just so sacred and special that your friends can come over and celebrate you. And I think mamas were getting lost in the mix for so many generations. And now really going back to the way our ancestors viewed postpartum as being a very ceremonial time um, and that we can celebrate it before baby arrives um, and get moms prepared. So I really love them. And you can really focus on so many different areas. I like to really narrow it down to like three or four areas. So maybe that's focusing on the kitchen, focusing on the bedroom, focusing on the bathroom, and then maybe focusing on the pantry or you do slash laundry room, or maybe it's a sibling. So this is your second or third baby and you want to prepare your sibling or the sibling. So your first baby's bedroom, you want to prepare maybe a nice little nesting basket for them to pull out. So that has like new fun things for them, a new book or like a really cool new toy that only comes out when you're nursing or spending time with your new baby. So that's something fun that you could do. So really just kind of first and foremost, picking the rooms that you want to focus on. And then if you're going to be the host or someone else is going to host for you, that's going to be really important because it helps you kind of decide like, are you going to be the task manager, the, the person that walks into each room and really kind of keeps the activities going? 
or is someone else going to do that? And I really suggest someone else does that for you, but you know, it's up to you, but it's like having your own wedding. It's like hosting your own wedding is a little more stressful than actually hiring someone to host it. So you can check in with a doula or ask a friend or family member to be kind of the host for it. And you can kind of behind the scenes, give them things to do for you and like really narrowing down what the tasks are that are the best things for you. Okay, just going, let me get them on the stove real quick. It is quite bright today, but I'm not complaining whatsoever because it has been the cloudiest June I know I say this every June, cloudiest time ever, but we're gonna live, we're gonna live. First and foremost, you wanna focus on the spaces and then you wanna focus on the tasks. So what actually needs to be accomplished? Is it organizing your pantry? Is it organizing your fridge? Is it making nesting baskets? So if you're looking for a really great nesting basket guide, I actually have one for free, like usual. Lots of freebies on my website, so you can check out my website. And I'll put the, it in the description below so you can check out how to make a nesting basket and all the details. And maybe one day we'll go more in depth. I also have a video um, that is about nesting baskets as well, but maybe I'll go more in depth in the future about all the things you will need for a nesting basket. But in the meantime, um, let's check on the potatoes and make sure everything is just getting roasty toasty. Yep, we're doing good. I don't want to overcook them. I'm just lightly cooking them a little bit, giving a little bit of flavor on these potatoes, and then I'm going to throw them in the pan. So what I really love to do is make a lot of nourishing meals for my client, mama clients, but in between those congee, those stewed fruit, veggie, bone broth soups, I also really love to make is some quick, easy bites that you can freeze like a whole sheet pan. So I like making like, um, you can freeze a whole enchilada or a lasagna, but make it with very easy, digestible, simple ingredients that are very high nutrients, high quality. So that's what we're doing here. It's very simple, but at the same time, has a lot of flavor and just hits a spot. Sometimes you just want a really good enchilada. So anyways, um, we're gonna keep going with this recipe, but um, I just really wanna say that I love a good nesting party. I would prefer to have that over a baby shower. And I feel like in this day and age, like there's so much stuff. We don't need more stuff. We just need more love and care. And people are more leaning into that in this season. So I'm excited for you to get into having a nesting session. Let's head over, start assembling um, a little bit more of the enchilada, and I'm gonna get the turkey um, on the stove top. Like the one that is going to have someone else host it for you, you can ask family friends to be like the wise ones in a sense and come and teach you how to do belly binding, how to wrap your baby on you, how to use the carrier. So there's so many beautiful things that you can do in terms of really fun like activities like party games versus just doing like you know guess what's in the diaper and it's like a chocolate bar like there's so many weird games out there no offense but like there's things that could be actually beneficial and include wisdom and love and nurturing in a very beautiful way we're just gonna throw some of these potatoes on um this layer nothing crazy very very simple again we just don't want to do something too much like that. And we'll pause there and I'll just move this to the side. I'm like one of those easy cooks that like literally just throw the potatoes on the side.
at the place where we can use our ground meat, our ground turkey, and add that in. So I'm just gonna sprinkle that in throughout the enchiladas. And then I'm gonna add some beans and add some sauce. Normally I would use a different pan, but we're just working with what we got today and what we have time to find. So here we go. Put some meat down. We have some beans that I strained because like I said, I soaked them and I cooked them. So we have some beans. Mom, please do not judge my enchilada situation here. Actually, you know what? Let's just pour it because we can. Add a little bit of sauce. Tortillas, more tortillas. And then more shredded cheese here. Love our cheddar cheese. Might have to make more or shred more. This might not be enough because we like a lot. Like that. And then we can do another layer. Potatoes down. I love these heirloom potatoes. Again, we're using really high quality ingredients, so I'm all about that. Mixing high quality ingredients with more nostalgic meals. We'll add more meat to this. Probably a lot more meat, honestly. I love US Walmart meat. Big, big fan here. And they so kindly gifted all of these beautiful farm products for me to use in my recipe today. So shout out to them how lovely I've been purchasing for like their meats and cheeses for years, but way before we connected and I'm just so grateful. Okay, so here is some more beans. I love the trick of just getting some dried beans in the bulk section, some organic dried beans, and then soaking them for a day-ish. It's so easy to do that and really just so delicious. And then I cook them the next day with like a bay leaf. Okay, we're going to add the tortillas. Call it after this one. That one's kind of broken. So we're going to go like that. Oh yeah, we have a little bit of more potatoes. So we'll add a little bit more potatoes. Love these heirloom potatoes. And then just add a little bit more of the enchilada sauce. If I had more enchilada sauce, I would definitely douse it, but it's fine. We will just move and groove and get it in the oven. And then we have a lot of shredded cheese, a little nub of shredded cheese where I'm gonna hide that because I want that melted in there and just oh so delicious. And that's my enchiladas, you guys. It's very simple, it's very easy, nothing crazy. I need to put that sour cream away. So that's what we're working with. Now I'm gonna put these in the oven for about, the enchiladas can go in there at 350 for about maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then once it's done, it is good to eat, good to enjoy. Let's get it in the oven. The recipe will be down in the description below, but I'm so happy that we were able to cook together and you can check out my nesting party guide. It is a full planner to, I share like from the invites to every single task and everything that you can create for your nesting party, including a meal train. So there's a lot of fun activities in there. You're welcome to download it. It's currently $2. And then I also have a free one that's a super simple basic one, but Anyways, I am off to Finn to eat this and Finn for my life because 
hummingbirds are everywhere. They're adorable, but they want me out of their garden. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so happy that we could cook together. I hope that you are able to subscribe and come back soon. I can't wait to cook more with you and chat about all things postpartum. Let me know in the comments below if you really found this beneficial and you just love chatting. Um, it's always such a gift to just you know share more and more about postpartum and especially when we're cooking together i find that i do this with clients every single day i'm chopping up and cooking all these meals while they're leisurely laying on the couch and just resting and recovering and we, ch we chat about postpartum so i thought what more like what beautiful thing that i can do is share that with you all so thank you so much and i can't wait to chat with you all soon and i hope you take care bye